offering. One, two, three, four. We spent so much time together, we're like sisters and brothers. Roar for the green and black. Roar for the great in spirit. Roar for another hundred years. Roar for the crowd. Roar for the crowd. Roar for King George. Let's hear it. Um, well, King George started, we met every Tuesday during the summer, and then we started rehearsing and we got uh, Frank in there, and then he started composing the song, mm -hmm. and then we all met together and we started rehearsing. Okay, so we got a small neighborhood grant to do this project, and uh, we'd like to thank Vancouver Foundation for that. Three of the students who wrote the lyrics are here right now. There's Kaide, and Lauren, and Shami. We all came together and we brainstormed ideas about like what what's King so special was. about King George. We kind of just incorporated that old with new, so that was cool. And in turn, we discovered more about the school too. Yeah. Some of the stuff we came up with, and yeah. some of it wasn't used. Which is interesting the thing. rhymes. <laughs> Building pride within one's neighborhood or within one one's community comes about as a consequence of people beginning to appreciate what they have. It's all right, guys. When we stop and kind of focus and take stock and, and begin to intentionally appreciate what we have, I think that's really what begins to help us feel, feel proud. I was raised in Cassiar and Watson Lake and Deese Lake, right in the middle of what we call Casca territory. It's a very big territory up there. Berries, we would just lay them out on the piece of um, hide, like a, a buckskin, a tan hide. We would just lay them all out in the sun for a few days, and then they would dry. And then we put them in our buckskin bag. This is traditional feast food that you're going to be doing. It's not done the way we do it these days, yeah. but it's more similar to what you, we would have done in the older times. So we're going to share as much culture and as much knowledge as I can, but first, turkeys, turkeys. So, you take all the goodies out, pull the fat out, okay? We have to eat what we grew up with, what we traditionally grew up with. When I go back to eating what I was raised with, rabbit stew and moose meat, I start losing weight. And you're going to roll away from you. And you're going to try and make sure you get all those little yummies in there, okay? Mm. Pass them around clockwise. We follow the sun. From the east, it goes around to the south, over to the north, and back up to the east. Grab one and pass them around so everyone can grab one, okay? In real life, we have an incredibly vulnerable side. And it is that vulnerability, and it's inviting people into that vulnerability that actually allows people to grow, that allows people to, uh, to build their you know, resilience. When you feel proud of your community, you're going to fight for your community you're going to support others to do the same. We really create the space, the trust, and the ability and the resources with which people in their own neighborhood can do what needs to be done. I've lived in this village for 46 years, and I've seen so much of the natural plants that we all love, the native plants. I've seen so many of them just disappear. And the regreening is really what this garden, this Lions Bay Native Plant Garden, is all about. The people who take action through a neighborhood small grant are much more likely to really care about their neighborhood and their community. We deeply value that. We know that when people feel a sense of, you know, immense pride in what they're doing, that tends to ripple out into their whole neighborhood and their community. Nobody goes home hungry. Let's make sure that the two ladies who work here get something as well. That's how you nobody goes home empty handed. That's my tradition. That's so important. Food is life. <laughs> Let your body down in the river. Listen for the drumming on the 